I'm Mark Stevens. Welcome back to the No State Project channel. And I am in Old Town Gilbert, Arizona today. Not too far from where I am in Mesa, Arizona, but uh, much, much nicer. As you can see, we'll get some of that there. Now we can see down here. And you can see behind me, I got those misters going because at this time of the year, you could actually die. Uh, yeah, it, it gets pretty damn hot here. Not too bad today, but actually pretty nice. What I want to talk about today is jurisdiction. And uh, the reason why I'm in Old Town Gilbert is because just up ahead of us, in a moment we'll be there, was where I had my first court case with no driver's license here in the valley. So we'll get to that in just a moment. Before we do, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the No State Project channel if you're not already. Let me know in the comments what other topics you would like me to discuss here on the No State Project. But let's talk about jurisdiction. So let's talk jurisdiction. Just first to make it clear, I am doing this for education as far as how I used to do things, and I am in no way suggesting that anybody copy what I do. This is strictly uh, viewing historically how I've done things and why I believe that I've had so much success and other people have, but again, don't try this at home. If someone's going to defend themselves and not use an attorney, I applaud that, uh, but you gotta do it smart. You just don't watch something on the internet and go ahead and copy. You gotta, you gotta know what you're doing. Because getting into court is uh, it's a pretty <laughs> it's a pretty dangerous situation. Uh, you can go to jail just for asking a question. So I'm actually here. This is where I had my first court case here in Arizona. It is not the court, the justice court anymore. It is actually the Chamber of Commerce. So this is a pretty old building. But it was the Justice Court in the 90s when I first started doing my thing. So we'll get a little historical basis there. Yes, it's the Gilbert Town Hall. And I had my first court case here. And interesting, there is a family of lawyers, very prominent attorneys, the Skousens. Donald Skousen was actually the first Justice of the Peace that I had the displeasure, the unfortunate... Uh, <laughs> I was very unfortunate to be stuck with Donald Skousen, absolutely no respect whatsoever for fundamental fairness, due process, you know, things like, silly things like that. And so the issue of jurisdiction uh, was raised, of course, not respected whatsoever. He had jurisdiction because he said so, and that was pretty much how something like that went down. And again, this was traffic, no driver's license, nothing violent. I've never been accused of a DUI because, of course, I don't drink or smoke, so uh, those are easy to avoid. But jurisdiction, and remember, this is just how I did it. Not making any suggestion to someone just watching this on its own on YouTube, just go in and do something like this. So what is jurisdiction? Well, jurisdiction is the power to act, the power and authority to act, to hear a case, a particular type of case. So you got three different types of jurisdiction, and the courts have to have uh, generally, you have to have the two. You have to have subject matter jurisdiction and you have to have personal jurisdiction. Subject matter jurisdiction just means that they can hear by law and jurisdiction, of course, is only given by law. Generally, what you have is the Constitution and then uh, jurisdiction is also given by through the legislature through statute and that's it. So the Constitution and statute will give the court, like what used to be here, the, the Gilbert Justice Court, to hear, let's say, traffic courts, or they can hear small claims up to a certain dollar amount. That's what they're able to do. That's subject matter. They have to have uh, over that particular type of case. Now, of course, I've said that just because a complaint is filed doesn't mean that there's actually a case. So a case means a case or controversy, which is the violation of a legal right and damage. You have to have some causation, okay? I know we've got so-called victimless crimes, but that's a different video. So jurisdiction is by law. Now generally what we're talking about here, and if you watch enough of my videos, then you'll see that I have admissions from not only cops, but prosecutors, legislators. I have judges that I've talked, I, I have an interview, well not an interview, but I did confront Scott Bales, who at the time was the Chief Justice of the Arizona Supreme Court, so right here in the Valley. And I questioned him in Tempe. I probably uh, should put that in the video. So we all know that jurisdiction, whether it's in court or out of court, oh, we know we got uh, the police just uh, drove by. 
Oh, here's, uh, we're gonna have some more police. Gilbert PD. There we go. We know from the horse's mouth, no bigger a, or no better an authority on Arizona law than Scott Bales, who was the Chief Justice of the Arizona Supreme Court at the time. Physically being in, in Arizona, that is supposed to be that would somehow ties you to the law, which would then give this court at the time, which would give the courts jurisdiction. Or the, poli the police going down the street, they see me physically in Arizona. Again, we're just talking about me. This is my experience. That they just see me physically in Arizona, and in their head, that must mean that the Constitution, the law, applies and gives them jurisdiction to investigate issue tickets and force me into the Justice Court at the time. Now, this is typically just accepted. And I know there are lawyers and they have done videos about how I do things. And they say that their position is the court has to accept that. That the court can't look beyond that opinion. Some say it's philosophical, some say it's political and it's, no. When you make it in the context of a legal complaint that's filed in court, then I believe it's subject to challenge. If someone's making an accusation, I believe that I'm entitled on the fairness, fundamental fairness of due process to defend myself, and that includes the, the fundamental legal claim that's being made against me. Right? Remember, this is just me. So I would challenge that. The police officer and through the prosecutor is making a legal claim that their law applies to me and gives them personal jurisdiction. I should have should have explained that. So you have pers subject matter jurisdiction, personal jurisdiction, and then you have in rem jurisdiction. For our purposes, we're just focusing on personal jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction. And the court has to have both. It may have subject matter jurisdiction, but if there isn't a case of controversy before the court, to, okay, then there's no jurisdiction. It's the whole doctrine of standing. You have to have standing to complain. And the foundation of the case is the legal claim, the legal opinion, that if I'm standing here in Gilbert, Arizona, physically in Arizona, then somehow their written instrument called Constitution, the law, somehow, they can't explain it, but somehow it applies and gives the court jurisdiction over it. Now, critics have said that that is a, uh, they haven't used the word sacred cow, but is that that is the starting point. But you can't challenge that. And they believe that no judge can actually look at that, that the judge has to accept that. And that's just not true because judges rule on issues like that all the time. And to me, the, again, the basis of that, I'm not just pulling it out of thin air, is I'm taking a legal claim that's made against me by a police officer and or a prosecutor who's claiming to represent the state. All I'm doing is challenging them on the facts that support that claim. Now, remember, we're in court. They're making a the claim against me in court, and like I've already said, I believe that fundamental fairness and due process requires that I get to challenge the opinions being used against me. That if they're sacred cows, if I can't challenge the foundation of that complaint, then I can't defend myself. And if I can't defend myself, it's not fair. So fundamental fairness and due, pro <laughs> fundamental fairness and due process require that I, you, I, I can only speak for myself, that I have the opportunity the notice and opportunity to defend. And if I can't defend against the foundational claim, then it's not fair. That's really the whole thing in a nutshell. Now, how I went about doing it was I would go through discovery. I would challenge them. And I know that one of the things that I hear all the time is people saying, the judge won't prove jurisdiction. The judge just won't prove it. The judge in any court case, civil or criminal, doesn't have a burden of proof. The judge can only go and rule based on what is presented to him or her by the prosecution and the defense. With the issue of jurisdiction, jurisdiction is squarely on the plaintiff, whether it's civil or criminal, the plaintiff or the prosecution has the burden of proving that, has the burden of proving that their claims are true. 
And if they can't prove it, the judge as a neutral arbiter, I know we can laugh about that. The judge as supposedly a neutral arbiter who's supposed to be ruling based strictly on the facts and the claims before him, if the prosecution or the plaintiff cannot prove their foundational claim of jurisdiction, then they have to throw it out. And they have thrown it out. It has happened before. If you go on my, if you just do a search for uh, traffic tickets that have been won, all you can see very clearly we have a lot of, we have a lot of cases or complaints rather that were thrown out by judges because prosecutors, when put to task to prove that their legal claim was true, some facts to prove it was true, uh, weren't able to do that the judge, in a lot of cases, did the right thing and threw it out. Uh, so you just have to do a search on, the, on this channel and you can see for yourself that many times we've had to, I've had tickets thrown out. I've used the same jurisdiction where I've challenged the IRS under the same, the same premise, because the IRS uses the same premise. They have the, the, the power, they believe that they have the power and jurisdiction to tax by the Constitution. They believe the Constitution applies because I'm physically in Arizona. But just like Scott Bales and every other judge and prosecutor and cop that I've questioned, not a single one can actually prove that that's true. In fact, what typically happens, if I have to go to trial, I'll ask the questions on cross-examination. So I'll put the police officer on the stand. He's already testified in writing. He's got a certification on the ticket. He already test he's already testified that the laws apply because I'm in Arizona and that I somehow violated them. It would be, I figured it was smart to question him on cross-examination and when I question him on cross-examination they will testify on cross-examination that yes they determine that the Constitution and laws apply because I'm physically in Arizona Old Town Gilbert and that 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 was the basis of jurisdiction but when questioned about it for the facts that they used to support that claim every single time the judges interfered and said that they were not competent to testify. Well, the prosecution objection calls for a legal conclusion. The witness can't testify. And every single time it's been sustained. I believe that if the witness is testifying to an opinion, you know, something in court, and they're not competent to testify to that, it should be stricken. And so if the prosecution's claim of jurisdiction is stricken and the cop is not allowed to even testify to that, then the cop and the prosecutor cannot meet their burden of proof. And because they can't meet their burden of proof, pro fundamental fairness and due process require that the complaint be dismissed. Here it would be with cause. Actually, it should be, at this point in a trial, it should be a full acquittal because the prosecution cannot meet their burden of proof which is beyond a reasonable doubt. And just to summarize, if they're making a claim, doesn't matter what the claim is, if they're making a claim that's the foundation of their case, and the one making the claim is not competent to have done that, then fairness and due process requires that it be tossed out. Doesn't always happen because as we know, they're all working for the same team, this political fiction called the state. But this video isn't about the conflicts of interest, it's just about the issue of jurisdiction. So that's how I went about doing it. There's a, a pretty good track record and I just want to point out that uh, for those who think that my my reasoning is wrong, uh, that doesn't apply in court. Consider for a second, again, watching the video with Scott Bales. That was outside of court. Or when I went to the city council meeting in Tempe, I was actually going to supposed to go. I plan on doing this in Tempe, but the Tempe Justice Court does not exist anymore. So uh, I saved myself a trip, and I, I'm down here in Gilbert, which I much prefer being in downtown Gilbert. Gilbert. I much prefer being in downtown Gilbert any day to being now in, in Tempe, any part of Tempe. Uh, so they can't prove it out of court. So I think it's disingenuous at best to say that they don't have to prove it in court. But if I can go and show that the, Supreme, the Chief Justice of the Arizona Supreme Court himself cannot prove that these claims are true, does anyone think for a second that if Scott Bales 
a Harvard Law graduate, Supreme Court Chief Justice, that if he is unable to prove that the claim is true, does anyone think for a second that some <laughs> some cop off the street, like we just saw, some Gilbert PD is going to do better than Scott Bales, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court? I don't think so. I don't think so. So that's jurisdiction in a nutshell, why what I do and 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 why I think I've been successful. Why I don't why I think in, in, in cases that we haven't been successful. But this is how I did it. I'm not recommending that anybody go out and do this. This is not legal advice. This is just uh, a, a, sort of like a, the video I did with Calvin. We're just going through how I've done things in the past and we get to show a little bit of history. I get to show the court building where I had my first case. Got fans everywhere. So if you liked the video and you got some value out of it, please like and comment. Let me know what other let me know what other topics you would like me to discuss here on the No Stay Project. And if you're not subbed, take a moment and get subbed. If you'd like to support the channel so I could do more videos and more videos like this more frequently, then you may do so in the description below.